Hey, this is Brian Ruby, pro baseball player and country music songwriter, and you are listening to Hank Jr. on the Hank's Corner Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Hank's Corner. As always, I am your host, Hank Jr., a part of Hank Jr. Productions, where I'm documenting life's moments through photography, videography, and now podcasting. And tonight on my show, I have a baseball player and a music artist, both. Please welcome to the show, Brian Ruby. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I am doing wonderful. And uh, I hear you're out there in Nashville, right? Yes, sir. How long have you been out there in Nashville now? About three, three and a half years since I moved. And Uh, and how are you liking that area? I love it. You know, Music City. This is the place to be. This is where I got to be as a songwriter, as somebody who's doing country music. So I definitely, you know, I always dreamed about moving down here. And I'm originally from Pennsylvania. But um, it's been about three and a half years. And we write songs every single day and that's what we do. And then we play, play the bars at night and that's the life. Yeah, that is definitely the Nashville life. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, fun for us tourists to come over there and watch it all. But I know it's a lot of hard work for you musicians to, uh, uh, do that on a daily basis. Yeah. It's like the Jason Aldean song, crazy town. Everybody plays, everybody sings. And that's the, that's the deal. You're, you don't know, you know, you're, you get to the airport if you fly in and, People working at the airport are songwriters and the Uber drivers are songwriters and, you know, the people with the valet at the hotel is the songwriter. So that's that's us. That's what we do. Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned you're from uh, Pennsylvania. What part? Montgomery County originally. Okay, because I got some ties out in the Philadelphia area, so uh, I I know that area pretty well. And, uh, you know, we we talked about that uh, you're a baseball player, and we'll get into that a little bit more. And and your latest single, uh, kind of, uh, I guess, taken off with the baseball career, you got a little bit of a theme going there, is Baseball Country. Uh, It's doing pretty well. And uh, tell me a little bit about that song, first of all. Yeah, Baseball Country. Well, so I guess you're right. as a baseball player myself, I've always kind of been like the guy on the back of the bus. I don't know if you've seen Bull Durham movie. Mm-hmm. Um, like I'm that, I'm that guy with the guitar on the back of the bus. And my teammates have always said, well, when are you going to write us a walk-up song that we can play on the speakers and blast? You know, it's got to kind of rock if it's a walk-up song. And finally, I decided, you know what? I'm going to do it. This is the time. To- this is the song. There's no time like the present. It's baseball season, and we did it. And it's baseball country is my latest single, and it's really just like a celebration of of uh, style and spirit at the ballpark, and and upbeat, you know, fun, energetic, rocking kind of has that arena rock mixed with country feel. And I, I know this is a podcast, so the people probably can't see it, but you know, I got the I got the rock hair and I got the country. It's a mix of the of of the rock kind of energy and and the country songwriting, and that's kind of like who pretty much who I am as an artist. So, the baseball country, especially story wise, it it you know if you dig into the lyrics, it it's the story of stepping through those ballpark gates and and going to a game and either playing in the game or playing a show at the game and and. You know, so it's relatable for musicians and and athletes and fans of of uh, of baseball, and it's it's like a really just a spring spring summer jam that we got. Yeah, and, and it's definitely a great time to get you on the podcast. And and just by the way, that there is video version of this out there, so everybody's going to get to see that long hair. And you know, when I played sports, all, all my coaches they told me, you know, when are you going to cut your hair? And believe it or not, I did have long hair at one point, but uh, uh, yeah. my kids what my kids don't believe it now because you know I'm pretty pretty uh, short cut right now. But but that's why uh, I got this because so the grandkids can say one one day I'll say, see, I had it back in the day. That's why I got this. 
Yeah, well, definitely. Um, and, and not since, uh, you know, there was a Philadelphia Flyer who actually was, I don't want to say, he, I guess it's called a musician, but more kind of like a DJ type uh, creator. Uh, and he would put together some of those uh, um, kind of like those dance uh, club type music. And, uh, you know, his teammates there with the, with the Flyers had actually had him do the same thing as far as having it for, you know, the coming out. And, you know, it's called a walk up in baseball. I guess it's just an opening song in hockey. So that's yeah. pretty cool that they got to do that and uh you know let's go ahead and start off by playing baseball country here on hank's corner all right we hopped off the bus shook off the dust took a little time getting all set up the grass was mowed the beer is cold The parking lot might just overflow In every ballpark From coast to coast To get the bass warmed up And the guitar started Yeah, sounds like it sounds like an American party It's in our blood Let's get the boys running We got a little twang with the speakers barking Hit it hard, put on the show Welcome back to Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. here with my special guest, Brian Ruby. And you just heard his latest song, Baseball Country. And I know that I recently just kind of uh, got to know you and I put that in. And like you said, it definitely is a fun song. You know, there's there's certain songs out there that, uh, you know, you think of when you do baseball. You know, John Fogarty has one. Uh, Alabama has another, which I uses my claim to fame that I got to go up on stage and sing that song with them. Now it was me and a bunch of other kids, but we did get to see the sing the cheap seats with Alabama. So, wow. you know, you know, maybe this will be, you know, up to that level as well. You know, I, I know I'm enjoying it. Yeah. But that's, hey, yeah. That's a, it has a, those, those are a high bar of songs. See, compared to Fogarty and Alabama, that's a tough. <laughs> I don't know. People seem to like it so far. So that's, that's good. Yeah, definitely enjoying it. So take me back to when you were younger. So, uh, you know, at what point did you say, hey, you know, I'm kind of an athlete. And at what point did you say I was a musician? Did that overlap? And how did that work for you? Because usually when I bring people on, it's usually kind of people tell me, yeah, at five years old, I knew I want to be a musician. Parents recognized it. But you're a little bit different. So I'm, I'm curious about your story. Man, I've kind of just been doing both from from a pretty early age. Like I 
I would play like we had this little hand-me-down guitar and I would sit on the stool in my mom's kitchen back home and with my little sister who's two years younger and when I was five and she was three and we'd be sitting on the stool just strumming and we didn't, didn't know how to play anything, but we were always sort of making music. Um, and then I guess baseball started a similar way in the, in the driveway. My dad gave me a little foam wiffle ball bat. And ever since then, I've been a ball player, little league through American Legion high school. And, you know, here we are, I'm 27 and, and haven't quite given it up yet. I'm sort of getting towards the end of the, of the, of my pro career, but I've been really lucky to have played independent league baseball and international baseball, played winter ball down in Latin America. I mean, stuff that, you know, maybe I'm just a journeyman guy and I haven't made it to the big leagues, but Hey, I've, I've made it, you know, been very blessed to have, you know, had this whole career and, and get to play ball. So I guess the music and the baseball have always gone together for me. And you can see that up to this day with baseball country. Like it's <laughs> that song is, is me. Um, but you know, music has always kind of been like, I, I came from a family of, of five athletes. We all played sports. We all were competitive and music, nobody, but nobody was a, really a musician um except me and at least at at the with the with the commitment that I was putting towards it and it was always sort of like this you know if we if I had a a bad game in baseball I went 0 for 3 or 0 for 4 or whatever struck out well I could just play music and it would sort of relax me a little bit like it was always this nice kind of thing that was just mine that I did and there was no pressure around it because I didn't know anybody who was a professional musician back home. I didn't know that, you know, you could move to Nashville and be a songwriter. I didn't learn that until years later. So it really grew from an organic place. And um here we are a couple of decades later and I'm I'm doing doing it for real in Nashville, writing songs mm -hmm. every day. Like today we were writing this morning. Uh, there's a, a great artist, new artist from Texas named Don Lewis, who comes up here and writes songs and records and then goes back down there to play. And he's had a couple songs do really well. And I was lucky to be writing with him. And um, I've really only been here in Nashville for a little over three years, but um besides being an artist myself and putting out my own songs, like the one you just heard, I have gotten really lucky to be able to get like 20 or 25 almost by, by now, um, 25 of, of my songs recorded by a different artists. So to be a working songwriter is, is really like, you know, a dream come true as well. Yeah, and I find that amazing because right before we got on the show, I asked you, you know, are you currently playing? And and you said, yeah, you're you haven't given it up yet. You're still doing both the music and you're still doing, uh, you know, the baseball. And I find that you know very interesting because I've talked to people like Molly Lovett who actually gave up basketball to you know keep going with their music career. Peyton Howie gave up uh, you know softball in college just to continue with their music career. Uh, yeah but you're doing both. How hard is it to do both? I mean, it's, it's just like both of them are, are really jobs that require a full time commitment. Like if you want to be a professional athlete, if you want to be a, a, a top songwriter in Nashville, you really got to commit to it. And in past years, I've, I've kind of been doing double duty and juggling these things. And if we're the good thing is if we're on the road for baseball, I can write a song and pitch it remotely. I can write it on Zoom with writers in Nashville. And we don't play till you know, till the lights come on at night, seven o'clock. So I have all morning to really work. And a lot of people will will, you know, do other things, but I, I get up and I work. Like and I because I know that, you know, once baseball ends for me and, and it's definitely gonna end soon and I'm getting towards the end and I'm okay with that and and uh, you know, like I said, I've been very lucky to to play this long and 
probably this summer I'm just going to play in a, a couple shorter term gigs like tournaments. Um, and before, before I'm officially done, done, you know, with it, but, um, it, it's really just balancing both. And, and I'm kind of getting towards the point where, where I've had some success in Nashville and, and I need to be here all year round and, and to be doing this and, and to see where it goes. And I have these, lofty goals of opening up for different country stars on tour and and getting on tour getting on the road and and you know being somebody who's who's uh living that life and and you know it's it's definitely something that requires a whole lot of work but um you know that's my dream all right and uh let's go ahead and uh play left field and when we come back we'll talk a little bit more Sail beat around old guitar The Louisville slugger left in the schoolyard Is that box of 45s at your cousin's house That you turned on, cranked up and wore them all out Is waking up the snow on Christmas Day The last pick kid with the winning play Is that first real kiss in the dashboard light didn't see it coming, but it changed your life Gotta be who you are and do what you can But don't miss a living, just making plans Keep an eye on the horizon, you know the deal All the best things come out of left field oh. Gonna play every honky-tonk, every dive bar Just me and a dream and a little tip I'll tune up and plug my microphone in Sing from the heart when the record man walks on in Sing from the heart when the record man walks on in Gotta be Welcome back to Hank's Corner. I'm here with Brian Ruby, and you heard left field there. Uh, we're talking with Brian, who is a baseball player and a musician both. I don't know how he does it, but he seems to get it done. So let's let's go with the baseball stuff. Who is your favorite baseball team? I grew up as a Phillies fan, so okay, yeah, it's it's uh, Phillies, um, the Orioles. You know, we just did this. I'm actually holding. It's right on my desk. I have this Orioles artists and athletes uh, lanyard thing that we, we did this event with them in, in spring training and got to hang with a bunch of the Orioles. You got to have a whole conversation with Adley Rutschman, you know, meet their whole front office, sing the national anthem. Uh, God bless America. So the, so the Orioles are a, are a very close second. And okay. you know, they could have a, they could have a good year. You never know who's, you know, it's, it's still early. It's, it's April, early April. It's, there's a lot of optimism around baseball right now. 
Yeah, there, there always is at the beginning. And, uh, you know, being from the Philadelphia area, you know, although I'm originally from Texas, my dad's from Philly, went back there for a little while. All my sports teams I do follow are, are the Phillies. However, the uh, the baseball team that I followed for years was the Chicago Cubs, and I got my shirt on. Yeah. And that's because I've told the story before that, you know, when I was five years old, I used to like to watch cartoons, and WGN had cartoons when I came after school. However, one day, all of a sudden, I get this thing on, you know, with Harry Carey and Steve Stone, and, and there is the 85 Cubs that are, uh, you know, playing, and I was hooked ever since, not really realizing that I was going to have to wait like 20 years to ever see them win a world <laughs> yeah. series. Yeah. You didn't but, know you what know, you were signing up for. <laughs> I, I did not. And, and actually, you know, I seen a lot of Cubs games live, but this past year was the first time that I got to go to Wrigley field. And, you know, I really enjoyed being there and, you know, seeing some of the history of that, that was there. Like I didn't really watch the game too much because I was there enjoying like, you know, seeing what was there at the ballpark and all the different stuff. And, you know, just kind of being nostalgic because Wrigley field has changed since, you know, over the years, but, uh, uh, you know, a lot of it's still the same. Yeah. So do, do you have a favorite player from over the years? Favorite player? Um, well, growing up, I loved um, Jim Tomey. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Jim Tomey, Chase Utley. I actually wore number 25 um, because of Tomey for a little bit in, in school. And um, just, I guess, just I always respected players who played the game the right way. Mm -hmm. Maybe they weren't the most flashy or or you know the most famous or whatever but they they were just solid ball players played the game the right way good character people and my dad would always say watch them you know watch Tommy watch what he does and yeah i i uh it's funny you said the cubs thing though because i i my bucket list i i have this goal of of trying to sing the national anthem in every major league ballpark and i've done a few so far i did dodger stadium and um, a couple others but it's definitely still towards the early part of the list but the cubs are definitely up there to, to do it at wrigley would be awesome yeah and and not only the national anthem but you know the cubs fans would know that you know harry carey used to sing the seventh inning stretch take me out to the ball game and that is very famous you've had celebrities do it over the years and you don't necessarily have to do the national anthem if you can get that as well it's going to be I'll just as that. great yeah i'll take it. whatever they want to give if you know anybody let me know <laughs> <laughs> well i don't have any connections in the baseball world like that you know but if i did i definitely would try to hook you up because that is pretty cool i definitely enjoyed uh going there to do that so let's flip it over then as far as musicians who are some of your influences man um i i guess like a sort of a wide range of stuff like uh, my dad growing up would listen to springsteen melon camp even a little bit of Jimmy Buffett. So I kind of grew up with that. Um, and then on the countryside, early Tim McGraw, Kenny Chesney. And I, I always have loved a bunch of, a bunch of kind of arena rock type stuff mm -hmm. as well. Aerosmith queen. So, so who am I as an artist? Well, I, I guess, you know, those are definitely my influences. I, I'm not really trying to be like any one of them. But I guess sort of by default, I'm sort of a combination of, of different parts of all of them. And th that's definitely who influenced me. I, I also occasionally I'll have days where I listen to R&B because of the melodies. I love R&B melodies. And, and um, you know, so it's a wide range of stuff. But, you know, somehow here we are in Nashville and doing country. And <laughs> that seems to be the place, the right place for me. All right. And along those lines, you had mentioned a little bit earlier that you want to get out there and maybe play with some, you know, big artists. Given the opportunity, if you can pick one or maybe two artists that you would love to be out there on stage with, who would that be? Yeah, well, <laughs> truth be told, I'm, I'm kind of at the stage of my career where I'd take pretty much anything. <laughs> <laughs> but let's dream big here. Let's dream big. Dream big? Um, well, uh, Brothers Osborne would really mm. be um, an amazing you know, group to open up for. Um, but Luke Combs, uh, Tim McGraw, Kenny Chesney, Kenny, and Kenny Chesney's playing football stadiums. So that would be pretty cool to, oh, yeah. Oh, to yeah. be there. But I'll, I'll take pretty much anything because currently we're playing 
playing the bar on <laughs> on pretty much every night and making tips and that's that's the but that's what you got to do to work your way up well, well definitely you you know you mentioned Tim McGraw a couple times of course you know as as Philly fans you know we all know that uh, Tug his father you know played for the Phillies and you know that's yeah. a a pretty neat little connection there but uh, I want to go ahead and play one more song by you it's called Hell of a Year and we'll come back and wrap things up all right. It's been a hell of a year How did you see Who I was Ain't who I was gonna be I could have been right was probably wrong so many nights wishing I could go home it's been a hell of a year oh, oh. it's been a hell of a year oh, oh. now my heart's out of love Fell out of line I swore that I'd never Leave again and I lied It was the weight of the world You set me free You can't sleep alone And you ain't sleeping with me It's been a hell of a year It's been a hell of a year back again to hank's corner i'm here with brian ruby as always said i'm your host hank jr part of hank jr productions where i'm documenting those life's moments now i always have to talk about food uh on my podcast i'm a foodie i enjoy it so i i'm going to interested in hearing your opinion but i also want to know because you get to go around to the different baseball stadiums and stuff like that uh, let, let's start with that has there been any place that you found like that's got like the best hot dog or nachos or something specific to the ballparks man i feel like if i if i say this i'm not going to get invited back to the other side <laughs> no I, I i'm a sucker for ball ballpark food too i got a Kind of watch it sometimes when I'm in different places. Um, Camden Camden Yards had some good food when we were up there for the Orioles. Um, we were just down in spring training for the Braves. They got a great new facility in Northport with some really mm -hmm. really good uh, spots to eat there. Um, you know, I, I always get 
I always, you know, I always try to mix up what I'm getting to try different stuff at different places. So I, I don't know if I can say an official favorite. I, I, well, actually I, I will say growing up, um, I'm a big barbecue guy. So I would go to the bulls barbecue at citizens bank park, which mm. is kind of in the, in the outfield. And, um, you can meet Greg Luzinski out there. You know, it's, it, he's the bull. He's the guy who it's named after and he would sign autographs. And so it's pretty, pretty cool thing. You can, you know, get some good barbecue and then get an autograph. And that, that was what I would grow up doing with my dad. And so that, that has that one hit for the sentimental value. That's, that's probably takes the cake. Okay. And when it's not ballpark food, what, what do you like to eat? Barbecue. I'm, I'm okay, all, so it's all about yeah. the barbecue, huh? Yeah. There's this great spot. I was, uh, you know, in Nashville, there's so many good barbecue spots, Martin's, Ed Lee's. Um, but there's a great spot that I found in Hendersonville, which is the name, mm. which is the home of uh, Johnny Cash, um, where he, he used to live. And it's called the Meat Sweats. Mm. So it's, it's, uh, it's real. It's like kind of in a really nondescript place, like in a strip mall next to a Planet Fitness and they're not. They should be paying me to say this. They're not. It's just a great local barbecue spot that I always stop by and get some some good food. And they have everything. And and I'm a sucker for barbecue. I, I have my spots too. Like when I'm when I'm driving up um, through Virginia. I, one time I stopped. I saw a sign and and I saw this place called Bonefire Smokehouse. It has the best collard greens in the whole world. Mm. So I, every time I'm driving through that area, like if we're on the road, I make make the crew stop at 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 the smokehouse and you know get some some barbecue. So that's that's my thing. Yeah. So those who normally you know watch my podcast, I've I've said before, I typically record these in the evening times, and and usually I do eat before I come on to the podcast. However, I didn't get a chance to eat yet, and uh, now you're definitely making me hungry for some barbecue. <laughs> yeah. because that that definitely sounds good. So when you're doing a lot of traveling, obviously you got to be listening to music and, uh, you know, you're on my playlist now, the guest of Hank's corner playlist that I got there on Spotify. Tell Thank me you. who is on your playlist currently. Oh my God. I, I listen to so much stuff. Um, listening to the new Luke Combs record. I'm listening to the new Jenna Paulette record. Mm, she's yes. great. Mm -hmm. Um, she's, and I got to meet her early on in my, my career as a writer and, and she gave me some really encouraging advice. I'm a huge fan of hers. Um, there's so much new good music out now. Ali Colleen, great artist, young new artist that that is doing amazing things. And, and I, I also I always have my classics. I have I listen to McGraw. I listen to Kenny Chesney. You know, there's 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 definitely that that playlist is still very active. But I try to mix it up with a combination of of favorites and and new stuff and it, also the the thing for me is as a writer is we're writing songs every day so i try to really be listening to the newest stuff to kind of always have an idea of, of what's what's out there and and sometimes i could be listening to a song and it'll get stuck in my head and it'll it'll give me an idea for a whole nother song mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll be in the shower humming it or whatever and, and realize that we come up with this entire new idea and we'll we'll go into the writer's room the next day and and try to write that and so it's really good to just kind of keep feeding my brain with new stuff and and uh it, and always try to keep it fresh and and you know see what ideas we can come up with no oh, definitely now I'm hoping to get out there one day, uh, whether I get to see you up in Nashville or if you make it back to the Florida area anytime soon uh, to see you play. But should somebody come to a Brian Ruby performance, what should they expect? <laughs> what did they expect? Man, just a whole bunch of country music from the heart. You know, I it's a it's an up-tempo show. It's fun. Um, you know, a lot of people having fun. And, and I would say if, if you are somebody listening to this and you are – at one of my shows i'm not playing arenas right now i'm not playing football stadiums i'm, I'm playing the bar so so if, if you're at the bar then 
definitely make sure to come up and say hi to me after the show. I love to meet people and um, to, to uh, you know, we have koozies, we have, we have all this new merch that we just got in. So it, you come to uh, come to Brian Ruby's show. You might just find yourself with some swag, uh, you know, in your backpack on the way out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, look, get out there and, and see Brian Ruby. Uh, you can find him on all social media platforms. You can also find him at the website that's listed below, brianrubymusic.com. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to get out there and see you. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I know big things are happening for you. I know you're just really kind of pushing the music thing and, and you're already taking off, you know, it, it's, it's already like that bass hits going and, and you're ready to steal second. I can see Brandy, that uh, going first, right away. So, uh, you know, definitely looking forward to what you got coming out this year and, uh, and in the future. But, uh, if you ever want to be a guest here on Hank's corner, you're more than welcome to do so. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be on. I'll be back anytime. When he broke your heart The one where we talked about Being more than friends Making a brand new start We've been dancing around it And drinking about it You're the only thing in this town That makes me wanna stay So what you think about running away? Let's be two for the road Let's get up and go If we don't hit the gas We ain't never gonna some real good years I could go up in smoke One way to find out Let's be two for the road Are you feeling shy in Or the Bonneville soft flats Or are you thinking some sunshine Maybe hitting 